What's up everybody, Nick here with Tech Illiterate, and today I wanna to do another quick video and show you how to stress test your CPU. So what we're going to be using today is called ADA64. So go ahead and get yourself to ADA64.com. You wanna click on that download link at the top and scroll down and you're gonna have these two options here, ADA64 Extreme. These are both trial versions. So just pick whichever you want. One's a self-installing EXE and the other one's a zip package. So go ahead and download that and install it. It's pretty straightforward, but once you have that installed, go ahead and open ADA64. And it's gonna give you this main window. And this is basically just diagnostic information. So in another video, I looked at HW info. I prefer to use HW info, but this is also really great for information about your system. So you can go ahead and just look at these different drop downs and it'll give you all the information you wanna know about your PC. It's super extensive and if you like it, Go ahead and use it by the way this is a paid program but like i said before this is a trial version so i think it gives you something like 30 days to use it before you need to pay for it but what we're most interested in here is this little button that's your system st stability test and this is going to be a stress test to see how our computer performs so you can go ahead and maximize that and you can see right up here on the top left, these different check boxes, the this stress, what, what's gonna be stressed in this stability test. So up here in the left, we have these check boxes and that's gonna let you choose what you want to be stressed. So you have the CPU, the FPU, the cache, memory, local disk, and GPU. So what I wanna do today is just stress these ones here, the CPU, FPU, ca cache, and system memory. So if we're looking down here, this is gonna give us an overlay, a graph of what's going on in, in our computer. And the reason why, before, like I said, I wanna use HW info over this one, mainly is because of this. So this is using that TCTL TDI reading for my CPU, which isn't quite what Ryzen Master is giving me. So that's why I use uh, HW info for that. And also it gives me a nice uh, different graphic to look at and to separate them anyways. So you have that there, you have these different tabs here. You can show your fans for, the, for whatever reason, this is just showing one of my CPU fans and one of my chassis fans, voltages, powers, clocks. This is unified, it just has a series of different things there for you. And stats, so this is a, a grid-like Excel sheet type of form. All right, so let's go back to temperatures. You can see my CPU usage right now is at 2%. Now I'm just using OBS right now to record this and that's basically all it's really doing other than background processes. So you can see my CPU temp right here, that's the blue one. Let's uncheck these ones here. Get those out of the way, we don't need those. Just the CPU temp, that's great. And all I have to do is hit start. And now that's gonna stress my CPU. And as you can see, it straight, shoots straight up to 100% and you'll see my CPU temp start to go up. I am using an AIO in the system, water-cooled loop, and my fan speed, you can't hear it, I can hear it, has been ramped up. So if I click on that cooling fans, you can see how my fan speed had gone up the RPM there. So this is really great, because it's gonna give you the option to do a repeatable test. It's gonna be reliable. And you know that across the test, it's gonna be the same. So say you wanted to test your new, whatever, CPU cooler, or you have different uh, CPU uh, thermal paste that you want to test between. This is a great way to get that repeatable test that's going to give you consistent results so that you can actually see what's better, what's not, you know, and how things are working. And this is also really great to see if your CPU is going to be uh, bottlenecked or cap out or have uh, throttling issues with temperature. So as you can see, mine's at 74 right, right there, right about now. And if I leave this on for about, say, five minutes, that's probably gonna be around the time where things start to flatten out on that curve. Now, let's restart this. I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like when I use hardware monitor. So I can clear that. You can also save it, of course, but just to reset it. And I'm gonna open up hardware monitor. Okay, so I have HW info open here, and I have my CPU, my liquid temperature, and my GPU temperature there. And you can see that we're sitting around 38, 40s, and my average is at 41 right now. It's pretty warm in here. That's uh, higher than usual, that's for sure. But if we go back to 8064 and open up that stability test, now I can reset this, clear that. And I also wanna reset this in HW info. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. Now I'm gonna leave this for five minutes and just to give you an idea of what 
it's going to look like once I've done a stress test. All right, so that's it. I did it for five minutes. I just did a screenshot there so you could see what it looked like. Uh, so I'm going to stop that test. It's been running for five minutes and 42 seconds now. Okay, hit the stop button. Okay, so that's uh, looking pretty good. We have uh, about 75 it was at there. So if I look back at this here, you can see that I was hitting around that 40 mark. It spikes up a few times here and there. And then immediately, once I started that test, you can see the temperature go up. And as I scroll across, it'll give you those different timestamps, the polling periods in which the temperatures were taken. So you see, you can see that it spikes up uh, occasionally, but as soon as I stopped it, went right back down. And I think I had an average of about 73 degrees Celsius throughout that test, about that. So not bad at all. So this is a really heavy test. This is like 100% balls to the wall test. So this is not what you're going to be hitting when you're doing certain you know, workload stuff. If you're playing a game, it's definitely not going to hit these temperatures. So like I said, this is a great repeatable test. So if, for example, right now I have a Arctic Silver 5 CPU paste on there. So say I wanted to try some Noctua paste or Arctic MX4, I could just go ahead, take that paste off, put the new paste on and test it again in the same fashion. And that'll give me the results in comparison to this one. Now, if it were me, I would probably do several tests, uh, maybe longer tests, up to 10 minutes. But uh, as you can see, the one thing I'm worried about is that temperature of my seep or, uh, liquid temperature in my cooler going too high. So as you can see down here, it's at 31 and it went up to 36. And at that point, it was kind of hanging up there for a while before I stopped the test. So at that point, I know my liquid temperature is not going to go up too much more. But if I were to restart the test, what I want what, what I would want to do is to let it go back down around that 31.6 area so that I can get a good consistent result in my test. But anyways, uh, that's A to 64. It's really useful. And uh, I think if you're interested in knowing more about your PC and to see what it can do, give it a shot. Download it, install it. It's great. The trial period, like I said, is about uh, 30 days. And uh, for me and my testing needs, it's been excellent. But uh, anyways, my name's Nick. That's my phone. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, and all that stuff. Thanks for watching.